Only three days prior to the destructive tornado that ripped through Andover on April 29th, the community was observing the 31st anniversary of the tragic F5 tornado that impacted the area back in 1991. April 26, 1991 was the day that, if you lived in the area of Andover, you were never going to forget it. The 1991 tornado was a part of a major tornado outbreak that severely impacted the plains. 55 tornadoes touched down on the day of April 26th alone, from northern Texas all the way to northern Iowa. 30 of these tornadoes would be rated F2 or higher on the fugitive scale. Four of them were rated F4, and one of them, the Andover tornado of 1991, was rated F5. This tornado began its track near the small town of Clearwater, just a few miles to the southwest of Wichita. It quickly developed into an F3 tornado. It directly hit Hayesville and eventually reached F4 as it ripped through southeastern Wichita. This tornado, before reaching Andover, showed no sign of weakening. It eventually tore through Andover, strengthening to an F5, directly hitting a mobile home park where it destroyed 205 mobile homes and tragically took 13 lives. 20 minutes later, this violent tornado dissipated northwest of El Dorado, ultimately taking 17 lives and injuring 225. The morning of April 29th, 2022 was sunny and warm. Seemingly, it was a calm, normal spring day in Kansas, but in reality, it was not going to be that way. The Storm Prediction Center in Norman, Oklahoma was anticipating an incredibly active day of severe weather. An enhanced risk, or a level three out of five risk of severe weather was in effect for much of the central and southern plains, including Andover. The town was located in an area that was issued a 10% chance of a tornado within 25 miles for this day. And there were dashes within the area, meaning that it was forecasted that some of the tornadoes that could form could be strong EF2 or greater. It was a classic Great Plains severe weather setup. There was a dry line stretching from the surface low over north central Kansas to the Wichita area. The fuel was there for storms to pop along this dry line with temperatures to the west of the dry line warming to nearly 90 degrees. Into the east, the dew points were in the mid 60s. Storms don't always pop when a dry line is present in this situation. But when they do, they can become dangerous quickly. If the storms did form along this dry line, they could produce very large hail and damaging winds, and even produce strong tornadoes in a snap. Fast forward to 2.23 p.m. the day of, the Storm Prediction Center released Mesoscale Discussion 582, giving a warning that confidence was increasing that storms could become very dangerous if they were to form along the dry line. It was stated that in the area along the dry line, strong tornadoes would have potential to form. By 5 p.m., storms had already popped in south central Nebraska, some of them being tornadic. There were also storms that had formed in northern Kansas that were trying to move to the northeast. By 6, the storms trying to form along the dry line stretching from south of Salina to the Kansas-Oklahoma border hadn't developed yet. But just a few minutes later, the storms finally began to pop in south central Kansas. It was evident right when these cells exploded that they would have the potential to cause some problems. The Storm Prediction Center released Mesoscale Discussion 585 at 654, stating that there was increasing potential for tornadoes with the developing storms around and east of the Wichita area. Sure enough, by 710, the storms that had developed to the north became severe, and by 7.40, Andover was included in a severe thunderstorm warning. 30 minutes later, at 8.10 p.m., the 2022 Andover tornado was born. Rapidly rising motion on it! Bye. 
The tornado was on the ground for 21 minutes. It began its track in a rural area about 5 miles to the southwest of Andover. It quickly strengthened, reaching EF2 in a matter of a couple of minutes. It proceeded northeast, teetering between an EF1 and EF2 level as it began to tear through neighborhoods. Finally, as it was getting ready to cross Highway 54, the tornado upgraded to an EF3. It would eventually fall back to an EF2, but strengthen back to an EF3 a few minutes later. The tornado crossed the Kansas Turnpike and north of there, the tornado gradually weakened. The path of destruction ended just to the west of a small town named Tawanda. During this time, it traveled about 13 miles and at its max width, it was 440 yards wide. Being an EF3 tornado, needless to say, it caused major destruction for anything in the path of it. It's estimated that the peak winds within this tornado were 155 miles an hour. Comparing this to the EF scale, the peak winds of 155 mile an hour would place this tornado as a high-end EF3. If the peak winds were even 11 miles per hour greater, this tornado would be classified as an EF4. The 2022 Andover tornado did significant damage to the area that it affected, but in the end, what truly matters is that it didn't kill anyone. The damage the tornado did won't be forgotten, but so won't some of the footage that was captured of this tornado. This was truly one of the most photogenic tornadoes that I have ever seen. Some of the footage that we have of this tornado is nothing short of outstanding. I have to give massive credit to all the storm chasers who recorded footage of this tornado, but especially to professional storm chaser Reed Timmer. On this day, he recorded some of the most incredible footage of a tornado ever. Just look at this footage he recorded close up from a drone. It's really as good of tornado footage as you'll ever find. This tornado without a doubt caused some severe damage, but it's truly amazing the power the atmosphere holds.